Hi, I'm Cindy from the Copper Torch. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to create this beautiful functional wall unit for your craft room. This particular wall unit has 11 feet of continuous countertop and two complete work areas with LED lighting over each. This is perfect for beading, painting, metal smithing, or even teaching a class. There are only five basic components in the construction of this wall unit. I'm going to show you how to make all of them. When we're finished, you'll be able to take this simple plan and configure any room to fit your crafting needs and make your creations. The five components are three lower base cabinets with drawers, work areas with drawers and LED lighting, 11 feet of continuous countertop, three upper cabinets, each with two adjustable shelves, connecting upper shelves. So let's get started. The two outside cabinet walls will have raw edges facing the front, which will be covered with finished facing. So the measurements of the sides will be floor to countertop and front to back. Subtracting 3 quarter inches for the countertop, the sides will be cut 29 and a quarter inch high and 24 inches deep. It isn't necessary to have a solid back. To measure the front bottom, add 3 and a half inches for the skirt, 1 inch for the space, and 1 and a half inches for facing, equals 6 inches high of a board. The width is 24 inches minus 1 and a half inches, equals 22 and a half. Repeat this. For I use an interlocking system when assembling the boxes. It's much sturdier and allows more surface contact when setting the screws. I cut 3 inches strips of scrap plywood and attach them 3 quarter inches from all edges using a spacer of the same size. All the pieces fit together like a puzzle, very snug and tight. Flip the piece upside down and onto its other side and attach the front and back pieces by drilling starter holes. Attach with 2 inch screws that have been countersunk. Slide a top in, drill the holes and attach with screws as before. This cabinet has 5 drawers with 1 quarter inch between them so I didn't face between the drawers, only around the outer raw edges. Make the drawer facing from 1 inch by 2 inch lumber so the width is 1 and a half inches or 2 widths of plywood. This makes the outer side edges of the facing flush with the outer sides of the cabinet so the facing will extend 3 quarter inch past all interior edges of the cabinet. For the drawers to slide past this overhang you must build out that portion of the inside wall where the slide will attach. I'll show you how in the next video. This video will show you how to release, mark, and attach the slide members. It isn't for measuring. Remove the slide from the package, release, and slide apart. The narrow piece is a drawer member. The wide piece is a cabinet member. Cabinet members are attached to the pieces which build out the cabinet to match the facing. Just cut these so they measure at least as long as the slide with one inch above and below the slide. This is to allow space for attaching. Cut enough of these so there are two for each door. Mark a line across the center, line up the front edges, and attach with two screws in the round holes. However, don't cut these yet. When installing the cabinet half of the drawer slides, I made a spacer block and matched the center of each slide with the mark on the facing, laying the cabinet on its side and attaching the cabinet members at once. Each drawer came out perfect. Now we'll make the left and right sides of the drawer. Measure at least as long as the drawer member so there will be at least an inch between the drawers and so the drawer fronts will cover and have about a quarter inch in between them. Cut two of these for each drawer and attach the drawer member, which is the narrow member, as shown in the video. Slide all these into the cabinet members already attached. To make the remaining drawer sides, measure between the left and right sides you just slid in and cut two for every drawer. Attach the sides on the ends with screws and add one quarter inch plywood bottoms. Add fronts to the drawers 
centering horizontally to the facing and vertically so there's one quarter inch in between. Cut out the correct size and start with the bottom drawer. Use the front skirt as a gauge for the first front. Attach the front to the drawer with brad nails twice to hold it in place. Then attach screws from the inside, sinking the screws. Space the next drawer with two paint stir sticks or something similar for equal distancing. Continue for all the drawers. This is how the finished drawer will look from above. This is how the finished drawer will look from the side. The first cabinet is now finished and gets two coats of semi-gloss white latex and handles added, then moved from the garage into the craft room. Just a quick tip, I tend to layer too much plywood on my pieces, then it's difficult to get it off the table and onto a creeper. Here's the solution. A block and tackle pulley system. Use a soft climbing rope instead of nylon for a better grip. There are six channels of rope plus one anchor rope, producing a seven to one ratio. So you feel as if you're only lifting 15% of the total weight. Be sure to use heavy duty ratchet straps with the eyelet going deep into a ceiling rafter. Next we're going to make the middle cabinet. The middle cabinet is more narrow. I thought this might create symmetry and interest. This one has four drawers, but you have the option to make it whatever you want. I wanted the drawers to be deeper this time, and this center drawer will serve both work areas. Doors are options also. This was during the pandemic, and the choices of plywood weren't great. Basically the same, except this one has facing between the drawers. To make the facing, cut the piece out, pieces out, glue, clamp, and secure with pocket hole screws. When you measure for drawers, the carcass will be one inch less than the opening, and the drawer front will measure one inch wider than the opening. The third cabinet has a pull-out tray for an additional work area. To guide the pull-out tray, I made two runners on each side, three-quarter inches apart, so that the tray would slide through. Now that all three are finished, install some round plastic slides on the bottom of the cabinets and equally space each cabinet to allow for the two desks. Now we're going to make the work area or desk with drawers. Be sure you have the cabinets where you want to leave them because we'll be making drawers to fill this void between the cabinets. To make something for the drawers to attach to, I brad nailed a 2x4 piece to each side of the cabinets facing into the work area. Place these 2x4s so that when the facing is attached, this section will be flush with the fronts of the cabinets on either side. Then I made the drawers just as before. Repeat for the second work area. Next is the countertop. Since it's 11 feet long, it was necessary to join it in two places beneath the end upper shelves on the top of the two end cabinets. That was why I slid in tops on each of the three cabinets, otherwise the pieces would meet with nothing under them. When the countertop was finished, the seam wasn't even noticeable. To finish off the countertop and tie all the five pieces together, I ran one by two pieces and molding the entire length. Next are the upper shelves. To simplify measuring again, I made each 4 feet tall and 12 inches deep and matched the width to the cabinet below. When complete, I measured diagonally corner to corner to make sure it was square, then attached a temporary cross member across the lower front to hold its shape, then turned it over and attached a quarter inch Luan plywood. 
then add facing to the top and sides of the shelf. Finally, the shelf was placed on the countertop and no nine holes were made with a Forstner bit through the bottom rail, then pre-drilled and attached to the countertop with nine two and a half inch screws. You may want to fill in these holes with plaster before painting. Add the shelves and face the front edges of the shelves. Repeat for the other two upright shelves. The last components are the connecting shelves between the three upright shelves. Add some runners to the outside of the upright shelves, forming a ledge for the connecting ones. You may want to leave the bottom shelves free until you get the LED lighting installed beneath the bottom shelves. Add a facing to the front of the connecting shelves. Repeat for the other set. Your custom wall unit is now finished, ready to stock up and begin to create. It isn't necessary for you to give up a bedroom for a craft room. I made this twin Murphy bed with an eye symbol mechanism, which comes with complete instructions and a cut list for pieces. I had to have help with this from my son, daughter, and son-in-law in setting the bed box, attaching the pneumatic rods, securing to the wall studs, and hanging the front. Watch how easily this elderly lady lowers the Murphy bed. Note there's still room left at the foot to get around. To buy this or have it custom made would be pretty expensive. This is an example of a similar unit that could be ordered, but it would still need assembly. There will be a list of materials and costs at the end. Thanks for watching.